the Fierce Kittens channel, where today we're going to talk about rivets. And if you're wondering what's going on in my bedroom right now, well, or sewing studio rather, I'm raising money for St. Jude Play Live. So anywho, let's get started with the rivets. Awesome. So now you've wanted to jump into doing rivets. Welcome to the world of riveting bag making. I was paid to say that. Sorry. <laughs> it's a thing. We like puns on my Twitch channel. So anywho, <laughs> so what can you use rivets for? Well, let's say you haven't quite jumped into the world of industrial sewing machines yet. You're still working with a domestic and you're trying to do whatever you can to move into the realm of vinyl. And let's say you've already tried all of the little tips and tricks that even I've talked about on my channel for working with vinyl on a domestic machine. That's where rivets come into play. Rivets are great for being able to tackle those bulky areas of your bag with ease. So you can use the rivets, not necessarily as a construction uh, alternative for your bag, but you can use it to kind of help with those, those bulk areas. So like when attaching straps, when putting strap connectors on, and when you just want to make your bag look cool. So you can do all these things to kind of counter. And it's not just for bags either. The necessary clutch wallet is a very popular wallet pattern. And a lot of people can't, for the life of them, get to that final step where they're trying to bring the wings up. I won't go into detail because it's someone else's pattern. I don't want to reveal like pattern secrets or anything. But a lot of people actually opt to use rivets to put the wings on as opposed to sewing them down. I'm one of those people. I have an industrial jukey and I still want to use rivets for those just because A, it looks cool and B, it's easier. Also, there's no raw ends that are available. So like when, when you're putting straps on, when you're gonna loop them around D-rings, instead of having to sew through eight layers of vinyl or potentially 12 layers of vinyl because you wanna tuck the raw end in, and there's other ways of getting around that. However, let's say you wanna do that, but you can't because your machine clearly can't go through eight layers of vinyl, especially that close to a D-ring. That's where rivets can help you. You can place rivets top down and what it'll do is it'll substitute for that one little construction step. And as long as the bag is of a reasonable size, it's going to hold together and they're not gonna fall apart on you. Now, I wouldn't suggest it for a really large bag like a duffel bag or something that's supposed to act like a suitcase, um, but for a tote bag or even the convention raider, which I'll actually pull down real quick and show you. I used rivets on the strap connectors. Now, I did sew the strap connectors on, but what you could do as someone who may or may not have an industrial machine is go ahead and top stitch it and have this thing assembled and ready to go and then rivet it in place. The rivets for me on this project, A, add to the cool factor because it looks pretty flippin' cool, but also what it's doing is it's reinforcing my stitches and helping to distribute the weight in the pool that is going onto these D-rings. So this isn't going to fall off. It won't fall off unless you attach it to a truck and try to pull people on a highway with it. I really don't advise doing that, especially if it's a skateboard, you know, the wheels just really aren't that cool anyway. So uh, yeah, Any, anyway, I got off topic. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's how you can use it. So as far as tooling goes, what you're gonna need for the absolute basics of this to attach rivets to your bags is some kind of rubber mallet. And you're going to need an anvil set for double cap rivets. That's what you're going to want that's very important, double cap. And by double cap, I mean they are both rounded caps on either end. So the post end and the cap of the rivet are both you know, rounded with a dome shape and sheen. They have a sheen to them. Um, you don't actually, it's not like a rivet like you would see on, an, on jean pockets. So 
Um, so those two things, plus I highly recommend just taking an old cutting board, preferably a nice thick one, not one of those cheap ones like from the Dollar Tree. Um, and because you're going to beat the crap out of this thing. <laughs> and so you can actually see a lot of the holes that I've developed over the years just from beating holes into bags. Um, I will talk about an alternative for hole punching, but just so you can get a different view of it, um, as opposed to from the, the other camera view, uh, you can purchase leather hole punches um, online for punching holes. Uh, I prefer this, to be honest with you, um, because it's just easier on me. However, if you do like hammering things or the satisfaction of creating holes in products, <laughs> by beating them to death. You can actually purchase these kinds of kits that have interchangeable heads to them. And I'll link all of this below. I actually do a lot of my shopping for leather working tools from Tandy Leather, but you can purchase a lot of this on Amazon. You don't have to go to Tandy Leather, uh, like a physical location or their website because I do work through Amazon. Um, and then there's other kits as well that have slightly larger holes than what you would find available. So you're gonna want the smaller kit and you're gonna want the smallest hole, which of course I'll go into detail soon. First, you're going to need to make a hole for the rivet to go through. You need to place your piece of work on the cutting table and then carefully place down the punch where you're gonna want the hole to show up. Take your mallet and don't beat the crap out of it, but hit it once or twice. One thing that helps is to kind of push through from the other side. And here you can see we have a hole that is the correct size for a rivet. Now there are other sizes of tools that you can get for punching holes. I actually have a larger set that I use for grommets. But the thing is like the size of the hole is going to matter. But same thing, you're gonna tap on it a couple of times in order to create the hole and to downward pressure to cut the vinyl. And then I, I like to just like wiggle it around a bit, but that's how I get the holes to show up. So a little bit about sizing because size does actually matter when it comes to your rivets. Typically they come in a small size and a medium size and a large size. And these I got from Tandy Leather. Tandy's small is six millimeter post and the cap is also six millimeters. They match. It's very small. The medium, on the other hand, is a nine millimeter post with a nine millimeter cap. That's the one I use the most for pretty much everything. The large, on the other hand, is a good 12 millimeter shaft with the same nine millimeter cap as the medium. So I do love the mediums the most. I do find that the smalls are way too small. <laughs> so the size of the hole is going to matter here. So first we're gonna go ahead and put the large in. So the large is going into one of the smaller holes. However, do you see this larger hole that I have placed in here with the larger cutting utensil? If I take the smaller cap and I try to put it on a large hole, the cap is just a little bigger than the hole. And so it's gonna pull through. So when you're cutting holes for rivets, you want to use the smallest possible size. Your cap also needs to fit. Now, as far as the post goes, the post is sticking out a little too much here. So while the cap fits, the post is way too long. You don't want the post to be sticking out that much from the other side of the fabric. Otherwise, what'll happen is it's going to bend, which I'll demonstrate later. So even the medium here is a little too much for this four layer thick section of vinyl. So instead what we'll do is we're gonna grab the small and even though it's a little bit too big still, it's the smallest size I have. So we're gonna go with that, but that's about the amount that you want. You want to have just a tiny bit uh, protruding. So when it comes to attaching the rivets, you're going to have several pieces. First, you're going to have the post and then you're going to have the cap. You're also going to need to have an anvil set 
So I talked about this earlier. This anvil set comes with two pieces. The first piece is this little bit. It's a, it goes on the bottom. That's actually the true anvil. Um, and it has a beveled and indented section. Uh, and that is so that your cap doesn't become flattened when you hammer it. And the uh, other end of this set also comes with the exact same beveled edge. And it's smaller. And this is what you're going to hit with the hammer. So you're going to take the post and you're going to push it through the fabric just to get that kind of set up. And the way that, that we hammer it is we actually put the post side down so that its cap is down on the anvil. Put the cap on. It's going to make a snapping noise. Push it pretty heavily, but not so heavily that you crush it. Um, but you'll hear it snap and you'll think it's secure, but it's not. Put this down on the center of the anvil. The post end is face is down and the small cap is on top. You're going to take the, the uh, curved edge of the uh, other end of the anvil set and you're going to grab your rubber mallet and you're going to tap it pretty heavily but don't beat the crap out of it like it's an ex-husband, okay? So hit it a few times just like that and that will secure it in place, and that is how you attach a rivet. Now, if you don't like punching the holes in, and you'd rather use something that's a little easier um, than beating the crap out of a bag you spent eight hours working on, then you can grab this hole punch, and I showed this off a little earlier, and it has several sized holes. All you do is insert your work and press down on it. Um, and it'll make the hole that you want. And this one that I, I purchased from Amazon has several holes, but I use the smallest size. I don't think I've actually ever used any of the other ones. Um, but you just turn it around counterclockwise um, to select the hole that you want to use. Now, once again, I'm gonna demonstrate, but with the camera pulled out a little further, we're gonna go ahead and put the post in for the rivet. This again is a small because I only have four layers of vinyl. Put the cap on, make sure that it snaps in place. You're gonna put the post end down with the cap facing up and put the beveled side on top of the cap. Beat the crap out of it, but not as much as an ex-husband. <laughs> then hold it up and there you have another rivet that's been installed. And so that should demonstrate pretty thoroughly how to install them. So moving on, what I was saying earlier about the longer post and the reason that you don't want to do this is because the post bends. Let's say we were like super plucky and all we had were the large rivets. And we tried to put a large rivet into this section. We have an ample amount of space left on the shaft and that's just not what you want. And I'm going to show you. We're going to go ahead and hammer that thing in. Beat it, beat it, beat it. Okay, now look at this thing. It is completely warped what happened is that there was so much downward pressure that it just made it bend off in the wrong spot. This is why you don't want too much shaft poking out from the other end of the fabric. It'll just bend it and it won't look pretty and it won't be strong. Now, about six months into making bags and using rivets on things like the bulky portions, the sides of the NCWs, my vinyl straps, et cetera, et cetera. I started to get really nervous about beating the crap out of the bag that I had just spent eight plus hours working on. So as such, I went and I got a press. So a lot of times these presses will come with what's called a die set. You can buy die sets for double cap rivets, for grommets, and the rivets are in different sizes. So really, you know, your mileage may vary on these things. It's fairly expensive. They're about $100 or just a touch over. And then the die sets are about 40 each. Really just depends on where you're gonna purchase them. So be careful, research where you get these because not all of them are made the same. They might fall apart on you. They may come in pretty colors, might only last two uses. So just be careful. However, this thing I can't live without anymore. Um, so I actually have a die set here for my most used size, which would be a Tandy medium. So a nine millimeter double cap rivet. Um, and I just set the post portion down at the bottom and I set, I set it so that the rivet cap is on top. And all I have to do is press down on this lever and hear the snap 
because you'll hear like a nice little crunch and a snap and it's done. So no beating the crap out of it with a hammer, you know? So that's kind of nice, right? Thank you so much for watching this video. Please feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm going to put all of the links and the products that I talked about below in the description. If you're interested in live streaming content, I am streaming sewing on Tuesdays and Thursdays at twitch.tv slash fierce kittens starting at 9 p.m. Eastern. Thank you again. I hope this video helped you. Have a great week.